Okay, in today's video, we're going to do another problem involving acceleration. Newton's second law of the inclined plane. Two objects, the inelastic string pulley, and this time, we're going to throw friction into the whole mess. This is the situation. This is our inclined plane. It is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. M1 is on the inclined plane, 10 kilograms. M2 is hanging off of that pulley like that with that string, 6 kilograms. Between M1 and the friction, excuse me, and the inclined plane, there is friction. The coefficient of friction between M1 and the inclined plane is 0 0.12. These two objects are attached to each other by the massless inelastic string. The massless inelastic string passes over the massless frictionless pulley. That means when we calculate the acceleration of M2, when we calculate the tension of the string, we can ignore the mass of the string and any energy lost in turning the pulley. In order to calculate the acceleration, in order to calculate the, acceler the tension, we're going to use Newton's second law, sum of the forces equal to mass times acceleration. That means the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass. We've been given the masses, 10 and 6, but we need to sum up the forces. Now, before we do this, I just want to tell you that in this problem, in this case, I'm going to tell you ahead of time that these two objects are going to accelerate in such a way that M1 moves up, the inclined plane and M2 moves down. It's important that we know that for this problem because of the friction, and we have to know which way the friction force is acting. Because M1 is going up and M2 is going down, I like to choose that direction as my positive. So positive for M1 is up, positive for M2 is down, and then I like to draw in my X and my Y axis for M1. Now we can draw in the forces. M1G points down, M2 points down, M2G points down. The tension on M1 points up. The tension on M, excuse me, the tension on M2 points up in the negative direction. The tension on M1 points up the ramp in its positive direction. M1 is not falling through the inclined plane, so there must be a normal force. The normal force acts perpendicular to the inclined plane. Then the last one is friction. Now, I told you already ahead of time that M1 is going to move up. M2 is going to move down. The friction is between M1 and the surface. The friction always opposes motion, works, acts in the direction opposite of motion. So the friction force must point down the inclined plane as object one moves up the inclined plane. There we go. Now, we've drawn in the forces, but M1G is not either along the Y or the X axis. So we need to break it down into its components because part of it is acting along the Y axis. We call that M1GY and part of it is acting along the X axis. We call that M1GX. Now this is a triangle, a right triangle. This is a triangle, a right triangle. And it happens that this triangle and this triangle are similar to each other such that if this angle is 25, so is this angle. Now, you will notice M1GY is adjacent to this angle, and we can use the cosine to calculate M1GY. M1GY is M1G, M1 times G times the cosine of theta. This side, the x component of M1G, is opposite, so we can use the sine function. M1GX is equal to M1 times G times the cosine of the angle, 25 degrees. Now we've done it. We've drawn in the angle. We've broken x m1g into its x and y components and we can sum up the forces now before we do that i just like to for visual reasons to move m1gx up because it is a vector and i can do that because as long as i don't change its direction or its magnitude i can move it anywhere and it is the x component or i shouldn't say it is the x component of m1g is actually acting down the inclined plane pulling m1 down the inclined plane and you can see we have this battle between M2G and these two forces to determine the acceleration. Let's sum up the forces. That should be fun. I like to start right here. M2 is acting, M2G is acting in the positive direction. So I'm just going to put down M2G. But first I'm going to put down the masses M1 and M2 because I already know those masses. Then I put down M2G. Now, what about the tension forces? Well, this tension force and this tension force, because this is the inelastic string, they are acting in the opposite direction, but they have the same magnitude. These two forces are equal in magnitude, but are acting in opposite direction. So if I was to write them in here, they're just going to cancel each other out. So I'm not going to write them down. Ft minus Ft plus 
equal, opposite, equals zero. Now the other two forces are M1, Gx, and the friction force. They are acting in the negative direction. They're pulling in the other direction. That's what we call the negative direction. So I'm going to write both of those down. I'm going to write down minus friction force, minus M1GX. And you can see we have this tug of war going on between M2G pulling down and the friction force and M1GX pulling in the negative direction. Now, we already told you that M2G is going to win because we told you it's going to accelerate like this. But by how much? That's going to be interesting. Let's do that. Let's calculate the acceleration. Here we have all of our values, we have the equation, and here's our diagram. Now we know M2g. M2g would be 10 times 9.8. We don't know the friction force, so we're going to calculate the friction force. By definition, the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. The normal force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to M1gy. And we know what M1GY is. So we're going to substitute M1GY in for, for the normal force. And that means now the friction force we have is equal to mu times M1 times the Y component. Okay, M1GY. Now we know also that M1GY is equal to M1 times G times the cosine of theta. And I can substitute that in. So mu times M1 times G times the cosine of theta. And if we plug all our values in, we get that the friction force as M1 moves up the inclined plane, the friction force is in the opposite direction and it's 10.7 newtons. So we can get M2g pretty easily. We just figured out the friction force and we can get M1gx pretty easily because we know M1gx is M1g times the sine of theta. So let's do that. M1gx is M1 times g times the sine of theta. Plug all the values in, 10 times 9.8 times the sine of 25, and you get that the x component of M1g, which is acting down the incline plane, is 41.4 newtons. Now we can finally figure out, calculate the acceleration. The acceleration is M2g, which is 6 times 9.8, minus the friction force, which is minus 10.7, minus the x component of M1g, which is minus 41.4 newtons, divided by the sum of the two masses. And you get that the acceleration of those two objects is in the positive direction at 0 0.42 meters per second squared. This value, which is M2g, is greater than the sum of these two values, which are acting in the opposite direction. And that's the acceleration for that system with friction. Now we also said we're going to calculate the tension. Let's do the tension. Here's our diagram, Newton's law, sec second law, and all of our values. Okay. In order to calculate the tension, we're going to apply Newton's second law to each of these two objects separately, one at a time. For M1, we have Ft in the positive and these two in the negative. So we write down Ft minus friction force minus M1gx plus the tension force equals M1, the mass of 1, times its acceleration, which we calculated. I'm going to solve for Ft because we want to calculate the tension force. I'm going to add these two to both sides. You get the tension force is equal to the friction force plus M1gx plus M1a. And you do all of that, and you get that the tension force is 56.2 newtons. Now I'm also going to apply Newton's second law to M2. And you can see for M2, we just have two forces. We have Ft in the negative direction, M2 in the positive direction, times the mass of 2 times its acceleration. Obviously, these two accelerations are the same, 0 0.42. I'm going to subtract M2g from both sides, multiply the whole thing by minus 1. You get that as a tension force. Plug the values in, you get 56.2. So you can see we got the same force for the tension force, and that's good because we said the tension force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay, we did all that. We got the acceleration. We got the tension force. It's a few steps. You gotta keep all your numbers straight. You gotta keep your negative and positive signs straight. The direction of the vectors, breaking M1g into its components, 
and sum up all those forces. All right? Do that. You can do it. Not that hard. Follow those steps. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can subscribe to my channel. Get all of my excellent physics videos. Very helpful. Give me a thumbs up down below there. Give me a positive comment in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.